Hi, I'm Darren Whitley, a multimedia producer, videographer, photographer. Uh, yesterday I told you that I would uh, show you how to take two photographs um, and merge them into one single continuous photograph. Uh, I had a poster from the high school that um, was so broad that I could not photograph it in one, just one image. Um, Another reason why you might take multiple images of a piece of artwork is just to retain the detail. So even if it is something you could take in one, sh one photograph, um, what you might want to do is take closer up pictures so that you can retain some of the details, specifically uh, the brush strokes or whatever artistic effect might have been used on um, this, this artwork. <clears throat> So today we'll get into Photoshop and I'm going to show you how to merge those two images together. The last thing I'm going to show you on this is there happens to be a rip or a tear in the paper. So um, in Photoshop we're going to fix that rip and re uh, repair it using the clone stamp tool as well as the um, patch healing tool. Um, and so I'm going to show you how to use those two things together in tandem and how they can complement one another. Let's see if this will there we go all right so and then we want to come over here to background layer and option double click so that puts it on its own layer and I'm gonna move this out to the right just a little bit so we can just kind of work on this edge in the middle and then I'll show you how we see the two of them in a moment okay and then we got some issues with scaling because um, I obviously didn't shoot them at exactly the same distance apparently um, I was just shooting this photographing these right on the garage door so let's take this and put it into difference mode so they will match. When they are matched, then you've got a perfect, and then com control T to transform. So looks like it's gotta go bigger. Slide it to the left. Just about matched on the J. Now I'm going to rotate right here. That, um, <clears throat> excuse me the paint squiggle is going to help me figure this out because it's unique and we can kind of see that rip in the paper starting to be parallel to itself between the two two layers <clears throat> so i think i've got the, the the correct angle set here all right So just for a moment, I'm going to uh, go over to I'll figure out this rotation just a little bit better. Give me a minute here. I've done a little bit of research to, to resolve something that uh, I needed to learn how to do. Here we go. So we're going to do Command-T to transform this again. And seeing that the top of the A here is about perfect. I'm going to go, I'm going to set a center point right there on the top corner of the A. So we turn on our center point, and now it's going to move the center point over here. And that's going to become our axis of rotation while we try to match up these two images. All right, so the E is just about correct, but it looks like we're going to need to be just a little bit bigger maybe let's go right there ok 
Okay. So again, let's now we'll let's move these center point here. Line that A back up. Gonna move the center point back to the A. Let's rotate again. I suppose it doesn't have to be perfect. The goal is to be perfect, but I don't. I think that there's just enough media here ver that we can kind of patch this all together and it would be just fine. Um, just, but I'll try. Hold down the Option key so it transforms to that point. I'm going to rotate just slightly. Let me see if I can get that. This squiggle right here, I think I'm going to try to get that to match. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good there especially right there. Let me back out a hair a little bit. Now let's hold the option and we're going to click drag that corner just a little bit until we see. I'm going to have to say that's close enough for me. So I hit enter. Let's put it into normal mode so you make sure you're on the move tool up here and command shift in we'll put it back into normal mode i think let's try that again well fine we'll do it this way oh my bad brought up a dialog box i didn't mean to do there we go it's option shift in we'll switch it back to normal mode okay so now we're going to do a little bit of masking to put these together to try to make it seamless. I will not worry too much about that. Misaligned paper at the top. I'm going to bring that down where the R matches. All right, so some of this we're just going to paint out. <clears throat> so now let's make a mask Come over here. Here's a new layer mask right there Click on that now we're gonna use a brush tool and I need to have black as the foreground color so we're gonna exchange colors with the letter X and uh, Let's see here. What size brush do we got? Yeah, we're tiny Let's bring that up We're using the right bracket key on the keyboard all right, that's pretty nice. Let's use a space bar, move it up. I don't need this to be entirely perfect because some things we're just going to end up erasing in the future as we turn this into a piece of artwork in general. And we're sort of going to bleach out some of the imperfections. All right, so the J is there. How much of that squiggle do I want perfect? Let's go back and put this back in. Kind of that way. So I don't have the a visible defect there. All right, space bar. And we're back to exchange colors with X and we're going to kind of paint that white line out. The corner of the R is pretty good. Let's go in here. Let's just make sure we get a good left edge on that R. <clears throat> and we'll come up here. Kind of get this. Oh yeah, that's patching together really well right there. no real visible flaw anymore. I'm using my my Wacom tablet, the Bamboo. <clears throat> I actually got really lucky with this. I, I own an Intuos too. 
Um, but I uh, haven't used that in a while because uh, there's been some, had some, a few problems with it in the past. Okay, I am pretty happy with how this looks. So I'm gonna merge the two down. And then the other thing I need to do is I need to go up here to image and do reveal all. And so what that does is it's gonna show you the whole composition. So uh, the next thing I'll promise to show you is how to fix this rip in the paper. So we're gonna use some really good uh, we're going to use a little bit of the rubber stamp tool and we're going to use um, I think we're going to use some healing brush type stuff some healing healing tools so the first thing I like to do we're going to use the rubber stamp tool on the right is my source I click there with the option key and we need to make sure we're at 100% opacity all right Let's see, are we, yes, we're staying aligned up here. We're working on the current layer. So just to start before I start doing the healing brush or healing patch tool, I'm going to use this because otherwise you get a little bit of color leaking. Here, let's get into this A. Let's go ahead and touch up the A real quick. Anywhere that you have a transition or a zone, area of contrast, um, the patch tool and the healing brushes don't work particularly well with that. So I've got to fix my edges first. And then I can kind of work inside these zones that have common colors with the patch tool and then that won't show, you won't get any of the color leaking, leaching, I call, I guess it's best called. Um, <clears throat> Oops, let's try that again. That's better, okay. All right, so now we're gonna move over to the patch tool. There's the patch tool. And we are going to um, do the destination replacement, I think is the one. So I'm gonna circle this and I come up here Nope, sorry, I'm out of practice. There we go. So that clicks that, and then <clears throat> here we go again. I'm gonna hold down the option this time. Tr click drag, deselect. Here's another selection. This time without the option key, I'm gonna draw this a little bit faster. Click drag, let go, deselect. Okay, now we're gonna come up here. And this is a pretty big patch, so I'm gonna break this up. So we're gonna use the stamp tool. I'm gonna clone that out. Make a break. This just allows me to make smaller selections. So I'm not having to do too big a piece at a time. So back to patch tool, click drag, deselect. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, let's try a different technique. We're gonna quick mask, and I've got mine set up so that I paint red onto things. We'll just paint this with a paintbrush real quick to make a selection. This is how I like to do, this is another technique for making a selection. So we're back out of quick mask. We go back to this. Maybe here. Now it's copied that dot. I'm just going to quickly spot the dot out. Let's back out a little bit. Command minus. Okay, we got a little bit of a rip over here by the A. Q, B, left bracket, P, 
paint it for selection. It's just a little easier for me to paint this than to select it with the lasso tool. I'm just getting used to this. Q, J, click, drag down, let go, deselect, command zero, everything fits. Should we fix this one over by the Y? I don't know if it matters. Let's do it real quick though. J, maybe. Let go, click and drag, deselect. Okay. So the last thing I'd like to do is maybe re, uh, erase the garage door. So I'm going to switch over to my mouse tool real quick for this. Um, this color here I think we can kind of pick. Let's do a average of 11 by 11. This will be the fill color that we're going to do. I just put that in the background. And then let's do a marquee. So click drag there's a marquee let's move it down just a hair and let's fill with that gray color there let's go up the left edge now you can see that's not perfect but we're just trying to get this to a position where I can use this and recolor it possibly Shift that over before I fill it. Okay, let's get the corner. Ultimately, all the painted parts are just basically going to be used for masking, and we're going to re completely redo this in terms of the color scheme um, and not really use it the way um, it was originally painted. Um, really what we're trying to preserve with the photograph of the poster are all the brush strokes, the paint spatters, so that we can use it, um, use those authentic and artistic uh, brush strokes um, to create a new graphic. So I hope this helped you out. Um, yesterday we went over the channels and how to get uh, your best channels out of a, an image and uh, make a broadcast ready graphic. Um, today was just a little bit different lesson and I'm not going to go into those steps from yesterday. So with that said, um, if you have any questions or uh, comments, please be sure to leave them below and let me know um, what else, any other ideas you might have about um, how to use this uh, poster graphic. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for watching today. Uh, I hope this gave you some ideas about how you can um, merge multiple photographs uh, of an object together um, and, and fix the seam. Um, if you, there's anything I didn't cover in today's video or another topic you'd like me to discuss, uh, please leave a comment below. Thanks so much and take care.